Hey, it's Dave here at Dad Space. It's been a little bit. How are you? Are you good? Good. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm looking at um, a little bit of an update from the family here and things that we've been working through. Topic of the episode when your parent passes away and you realize how fleeting life really is. Here on Dad Space. I'm glad you're here. And if you're like me, and you have experienced the loss of a parent, or you're in the process of, or you're dreading the idea of losing a parent, I'm going to talk about it here on Dad Space. Here we go. So, the last two weeks, Around two weeks. I've gone from having my mom with us here. She was in her early 70s. Healthy, active, busy. Uh, to burying her just a few days ago. And being with her in the hospital as she was hooked up to all the machines and on life support. She was unconscious for 10 days. And uh, we took shifts. We were sitting with her and talking to her. She did open her eyes for me once for a couple seconds. And I could kind of see her eyes. I don't know if she saw me. I, I hope she did. But I know that she knew I was there. And uh, it was really, really surreal to sit in the room alone with my mom, who can't respond to me. She can't answer my questions. She doesn't turn her head and look at me. She doesn't raise her hand or do anything to acknowledge my presence. But I talked to her, and... The nurse has always encouraged us to, to speak to her and let her know what's going on. So I would read to her comments from listeners from my podcasts and emails and messages from family and friends as we were keeping our community up to date on what was happening with my mom. And I would read them to her as well, just her and I. And uh, when we're sitting in the funeral, part of the... Uh, they talked about at the funeral was that it seems like we're always feel so robbed when we lose someone special to us, especially a parent. I lost my dad 20 years ago uh, to cancer. And now I've lost my mother as well. And it, when I heard that mentioned in in the, the funeral that we feel so robbed, like, they were taken from us. Why were they taken? You know, we lost them. They were taken from us. And and the, the, the thought was shared that instead of thinking, why were they taken from us? And we feel so robbed in the process of that. Instead, flip it around and think of it this way. Why were we so blessed to have them? It's a different perspective, right? Instead of they were taken from us, how about why were we chosen to have that person in our life? Why why were they here for us? How did we how did we land the opportunity to be with that person? A husband, a wife, a child, a friend, a family member, a parent. How did we score in the big lottery of life to have that person be a part of our 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 life, be part of our memory, be part of our our growing up, our experience of life? How, how did we how did we land that opportunity to have that person? in our life. It's such a better framework 
than feeling like we've been robbed and we've lost something that meant something so much to us. And I think as adults, speaking for myself, now I'm at this weird time in my life where I have never, ever been an orphan. Meaning that I don't have my parents in my life or on this planet. I've never experienced that in my whole life. And I'm in my 50s, and this is the first time I've never had a parent. It's a it's a very odd feeling. I, f I said to my sister, who's younger than I am, that when my, when my mom passed away, that it feels like her and I have to be adults now because we were always somebody's kid up to that point. And now that both my dad, again, 20 years ago, he passed away. And now my mom, when we put them in the graveyard together, side by side again for the first time in 20 years... They're two caskets together. I just, this overwhelming sense that I am, I'm now the adult. <laughs> and it sounds odd when I'm in my 50s to finally come to that realization with three grown children, but it was that weird, surreal moment where there's no one to go to. If I want to ask my parents about what I was like when I was a kid, that opportunity is gone. If I wanted to look on my phone, I, a side note, I just had my birthday a few weeks ago. And I, I work night shift. I, I love podcasting. I'd love to do this as a career, but at this point, it's not in the cards. I'm still working a full-time night job. And then I do this in daytime. So like I work last night. I've been up since 9 p.m. yesterday. You know, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning now when I'm recording this. So I've been up for a long time. And that's how I do my podcasts. But I sleep during the day. And on my birthday, my mom came by and she bought me these little tiny one bite cupcakes with like the, the white icing and the sprinkles on top. A little pack of 12. They're so small. You can eat them all. And, well, for me, I can eat them all <laughs> pretty quickly. But she bought me these little cupcakes and a tub of ice cream, just a small tub of ice cream. And I live in Canada, so it's cold in November. She put it between the outdoor screen door and our main door of our front, uh, front door of our house, and then left me a voice message saying, Dave, uh, when you get up, and I hope you get up soon, there's a ice cream in between the door. You want to put that in the freezer. Typical mom, right? making sure that I don't let that ice cream melt because that would be bad. And uh, so I got up later that afternoon and it was still fine. And uh, it's weird, you know what? Because after she passed, I opened the freezer and I hadn't even opened that container of ice cream yet. I know, self-discipline, right? But I couldn't open the ice cream because that was the last gift that my mother ever gave me. Weird, right? Ice cream. I ate the cupcakes. Can't let those go bad. But for the ice cream, I just couldn't, op I couldn't open the lid knowing that was the last time my mom would buy me ice cream. It's weird, right? And I think the one thing that really caught me at the funeral, more, mostly when we went to the gravesite after these, after the funeral, we did our interment at the cemetery. I'm watching my kids, my adult boys, respond to the overwhelming realization that grandma is gone. There was just this humbling moment to watch my grown adult men, boys, just letting it wash over them that this was real. The grandma that watched them when they were little, when mom and dad were working, the grandma that was so proud of them and hugged them and loved on them and bragged about them and prayed for them and was there for them their whole life. 
was no longer here. They were the honorary pallbearers and carried her from the, the hearse to her final resting spot. Just watching them deal with grief as adults was beautiful and horrifying as a parent to know that they were dealing with something pretty, pretty serious in that moment. And their love and their care for, for myself and for my wife as our children has grown. Watching Jen and I deal with the loss of Jen's dad, my dad, and now my mom. It's such a weird feeling just to watch them kind of process the fact that, you know what, there's going to be a day when our mom and dad aren't here and what that means to them. So as you're dealing with life, you're going to deal with loss. You're going to lose some pretty amazing people. And for those that are listening to this and you've lost children, my wife and I lost our fourth child early in pregnancy. And no matter where you're on that scale of what you believe as far as human life and when that begins, when we found out we were pregnant with number four, which was a surprise, by the way, we were dreaming about who this person would be and what they would become right from the beginning. We didn't start dreaming about their future when they were born. We started dreaming right away and having those conversations. How are we going to pay for a fourth child? How are we going to, we're going to have to buy a bigger vehicle. Like all those questions started coming up right away when we found out, but then we lost that baby. And all of this stuff comes back the next time that loss comes to your doorstep. All of this will come back for you. And no matter where you are at as a dad on your journey, whether you've had a great, great parents in your past or not, your kids are looking to you and how you deal with loss. So again, I'm just going to go back to what they talked about at the funeral, that instead of saying, how dare you take somebody I love, how dare you strip away a person that brings me value and is my center in the universe, my parent, how dare you take that away from me? I feel robbed. I feel cheated. Instead, flip it around and say, who am I that I had the opportunity to have that person in my life? Who am I to be the potential dad of a fourth child? Who am I to be that person? Who am I to have that best friend who sadly is no longer here? Who am I to have had that friendship? Who am I to have had that parent? If we look at life through the lens of I'm blessed to have these people in my life instead of I'm robbed because someone was taken, I think that we'll have a better outlook. And I think we're going to appreciate people a little bit more. And my challenge to you is to have those conversations now with those people that you find value in. Because I've heard it it's almost every country song. You never know it's the last time until it is. You never know it's the last time your mom's going to put ice cream at the doorstep and try to wake you up to go get it put in the freezer. You never know when the last email, you never know when that last missed call that says dad's calling or mom's calling or my son, my daughter's calling. My friend is calling. And you look at your phone and go, eh, I'll get them next time. I'll call them back. You never know it's the last time until it is. 
And I think when we lose someone special, see there, I did it again. When we, when, when someone is taken from us and we feel robbed, because I still feel robbed. We just, we struggle with finding the words and the ability to cope. But you also get to be really introspective and you get a chance to think about how that person shaped you and how your life is better because of them. And in that you can find some joy, some peace, and it's a great time to reflect. So if you, like me, in the last couple of weeks, I spent a lot of time in the hospital by myself with my mom just sitting there for hours and hours and hours, going home and sleeping for two hours, coming back to the hospital again. I spent a lot of money in parking. <laughs> it's expensive, but it was worth every moment to be with my mom because I promised my dad 20 years ago that my mom would not be alone. And my commitment in the hospital for her was to be in the room even though I knew that she couldn't respond to me. And thankfully, in the divine way of how the world works and the universe or whatever, I was the last person that she was with when she took her last breath. So I kept my promise to my dad. And now I'm an adult orphan. I'm not used to it yet. I don't know if I'm going to be used to it yet. But I do know. I have a wife that loves me. I have three kids here on earth that are amazing. And I have time. How much time? I don't know. Do you know how much time you have? No. Just remember that we never know it's the last time until it is. So today my challenge for you is to make the most of this moment to shut off this podcast and go and spend some time with the people you love, to call people, to leave messages, to buy some ice cream and stick it between the doors, to celebrate the birthdays, to celebrate the, the big and the small. And give your kids so many memories. There's so many stories you've never told your kids about your life. There's so much that even though they're growing and they're getting older, there's so many things they don't know about you yet. Please tell them. Please do that. Because after you're gone and everyone drives away from the funeral, everyone drives away from the gravesite, everybody goes back to being normal, whatever that is, they're going to love the memories. They're going to love what you poured into them and the stories you share. So share your story. Tell your kids. Tell your spouse. Tell your friend. Make sure as well that you tell your, your family what your wishes are. Sadly, my mom and I never had that conversation. So we had to make decisions on her behalf we know her really well, and we know what she liked and what she didn't like. So we were able to do our best to grant her a final goodbye. But it's probably a good idea for you to have that conversation. It's going to suck. <laughs> it's going to be hard. But those that you leave behind will have a little easier time dealing with the amount of things that have to be decided upon after you go. So please have that conversation and please make sure it's done right. Because in the stress of everything that happens after we leave, our family are trying to pull themselves together and pull the pieces together. So anything that you can leave them for instructions on your wishes will be helpful. We've only got one shot at this, everybody. Dads, there's only one time 
that you can do this right. So my encouragement for you as you listen to this is to do your best, tell your story, and love your family. And there'll be some tears when you're gone. There'll be some laughter as we look back at photos and reminders of amazing stories and things that we did and places we've been with you. The gift of your life is reflected in what you give. And your family is a reflection of you. So be a great dad by pouring into your family. Thanks for listening to the podcast. And we're going to get back to our regular regular episodes. But again, to all those that reached out during the process of what happened with my mom, I just want to again want to thank you for the kind words. We've received flowers from listeners, like some of the most amazing people in the world. You know who you are, and I appreciate you. Great stuff coming up on the podcast again. Thank you so much. And uh, go, go say thank you to somebody today. Take care. Hey, thanks for listening to Dad Space today. I'm so thankful that you were here for this episode. If uh, you like the show, please let another dad know. Hey, <laughs> that kind of rhymed. Anyways, uh, share the episode out with somebody in your circle who would love Dad Space. That means so much to us here for our guests who donate their time to be on the show. And we just want to see this grow. So, again, another rhyme. Oh, wow. Anyhow, <laughs> um, I think I need to write a song or something. Thank you for being here for with Dad Space. And again, looking forward to the next episode. Look forward to having you here again with us. And if we can help you in any way, if you have a great guest idea for the show, a topic that we you would love us to cover, we would love to do that here on Dad Space. So thanks for listening and thanks for being part of the community. And to you, Dad, thank you for listening and thank you for sharing Dad Space. Catch you on the next one. Take care.